Dear colleagues, this patient had cataract with traumatic genular dialysis from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. In the previous video, I have shown up to this, up to cortical cleanup. And now, in this part of the video, I am going to show implantation of the intraocular lens and the subsequent steps. Here goes the intraocular lens. The leading haptic goes into the capsular bag. The bag has been distended with viscoelastic substance and now the trailing haptic is gently pushed into the anterior chamber and now I am using a Sinsky hook through the side port at 8 o'clock. The chopper which is being introduced through the 2 o'clock side port is being is just supporting the anterior surface of the lens and uh, now the Sinsky hook is dialing the lens into the capsular bag. Here it is. So the lens goes into the capsular bag and now if I keep the lens at this position the trailing haptic is nicely supporting the dehiscent portion of the genule. But the mistake I did is I dialed the lens further. I thought that the bag is being nicely supported by the CTR that I have used in this case so I can dial the lens. So, I dialed the lens and I kept the haptics at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock meridian. And now I'm going to clean the viscoelastic substance that I have used in this case, that is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And if I clean it to some extent and leave it, probably then also I can avoid vitrectomy. But as I am very thorough in other cases with cleaning of viscoelastic substance, in this case also I did that. But here I notice one thing. There is a tag. There is a thread light tag from 2 o'clock. I thought it is lens fiber, but it is not. It is vitreous strands. So anyway, I have to use vitrectomy cutter. Before that, I am using the bimanual irrigation aspiration for further cleaning of scholastic substance. Now, what happened is, during this process of cleaning of viscoelastic substance, the irrigation uh, the irrigating fluid hydrated the vitreous and it pipped out through the dehiscent area and you can see the lens is being pushed towards 6 o'clock so I inject some air to support it and now I'm using transnolone acetate to delineate the vitreous strands. I wash out part of this transnolone acetate with a 23 gauze Simco cannula and then I can see that the vitreous is seen just in front of the main incision and at 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. The main incision is at around 10.30 or 11 o'clock. And now I want to make another side board. Through this side board, I'm introducing a Sinsky hook. And I want to pull the vitreous strands towards the center. I'm hooking it and pulling it towards the center. And we can see there is a lot of vitreous. So we have to trim these vitreous strands. Now my plan is to inject an air bubble and then a bit of pilocarpine to constrict the people as much as possible. And this is pilocarpine 
1% intracameral preparation. It is available in the market. We can use this intracamerally. And in this case, you can see that the pupil has started constricting from the inferior aspect. But the superior aspect is not constricting, indicating that the pupillary margin has been hooked by the vitreous strands. Now, the sideboard that I have made at 4 o'clock is very small. I want to use this board for introducing the vitrectomy cutter, which is 20 gauge. So, I want to enlarge this step wound a little bit so that the cutter can go into the anterior chamber easily. This much is enough. And now I am injecting some more transneuron acetate superiorly so that the vitreous strands get stained very well. And now here goes the cutter, the irrigation aspiration. I'm going to introduce the irrigation to the right side board at 8 o'clock and the cutter from the left side board at around 4 o'clock. The main incision is at 10.30 o'clock. And now, see how beautifully you can cut the vitreous strands. The machine being used is Oatly Catrex 3 pneumatic cutter. There is an inbuilt air compressor in the system and the cut rate is 1200 per minute. Here I have to hook this stands. This portion of the vitreous is some amount of it is incarcerated in the main wound. To make it free, we must hook this vitreous strand and cut it at the pupillary margin. Like this. And once this strand, the portion of the strand that is incarcerated in the main wound, once it is free, if you just depress the posterior leap of the main wound, it will come out. So nice shaving or trimming of the vitreous strands are being done. The bag is nicely supported by the capsular tension ring that has been used. Now I depress the posterior leaf and the vitreous strand comes out. Now before I remove the irrigation, I am doing some more cutting. The people appears good. Yes. Now the people is round. The people should be round and trimming of vitreous should be very good to get a nice appearance in the postoperative period. Now before I come out I inject an air bubble so that I can tamponate the vitreous so that some more vitreous doesn't come out through the dehiscent area. And now I added the owns inject bit of moxifloxacin and then I replace the air with BSS. If we do a nice vitrectomy, then result is very good in such cases and the patient gets very good vision. Before we conclude, we must check the intraocular pressure 
and check that there is no leakage from any site. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will encourage you to take up challenging cases to learn anterior vitrectomy and do very well in your practice.